2022 looks to be a pretty strong year for new roller coasters worldwide. You have a handful of rides originally meant for 2020 that were delayed two years due to the pandemic that are finally set to open. And then there recently was a flurry of new announcements at IAPA. So in this video, I will count down my top 25 most anticipated new roller coasters for 2022. Now this list is not necessarily my prediction how I'd rank these rides. For example, some clones may place lower than a new custom ride. The ranking is a balance between the ride's expected quality and uniqueness. Number 25, the unknown spinning coaster coming to Sunak Cultural Tourism City. This is a Mauer SC3000 spinning coaster. I love the Mauer spinners with the larger and more expansive layouts. I'm most intrigued by the large straight drop on this one to start, and this funky looking top hat element. Those could be quite thrilling if you're spinning like a top through them. The rest of the ride consists of a large helix and some off-axis bunny hills for variety that should further promote spinning. Number 24, Space Warp at Oriental Heritage. The second Vacoma Space Warp is sure to be a winner. Formula at Energylandia is a short but sweet coaster. It has a solid initial launch, three fun inversions, some forceful turns, and decent airtime hills mixed in. This is a dynamic coaster that offers a little bit of everything, and I'm glad to see more on the way. Number 23, Giant Digger at Lote World Magic Forest. This is a blue fire clone. This mock launch coaster is fun and well-rounded. The launch is pretty good. The first three inversions have good hang time, and the final inversion has some violent laterals and hang time. Add in some pops of airtime, some of the most comfortable trains in the industry, and a glass smooth ride experience, and you have a real crowd pleaser. Number 22, Storm at Dubai Hills Mall. This intimate creation is being built inside a massive 164 foot or 50 meter tall dome. We don't know too much about this coaster, but it will have an LSM lift hill, and it sounds like you'll have a layout similar to those proposed polar coasters. The coaster will have 2,228 feet or 679 meters of track, but we don't exactly know what elements will be included. Depending how many inversions and airtime hills are included, this coaster has the potential to move up on this list once we learn more, especially if there are some cool visual effects inside the dome as well. Number 21, Emperor at SeaWorld San Diego. This Balger Mabillard dive coaster looks to have a faster paced layout than the other dive machines. The first drop should offer the usual floater airtime, and then I'm interested to see if the three inversions and the rest of the layout feel any snappier than usual. Number 20, Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This B&M dive machine looks better than Emperor. I always love the sustained floater airtime in these dive machines, so I'm intrigued what will happen on a Beyond Vertical plunge. The rest of the layout has the usual Immelman and a hang time filled 0G roll, plus another airtime hill or two. And I also cannot wait to see what Fiesta Texas does with a themed queue line. Their most recent queue lines have felt like attractions in themselves with all their detail. Number 19, Top Gun Coasters at Fanta Wild and Fanta Park Road of Rejuvenation. This entry refers to three different Vacoma Top Gun launch coasters coming to China for 2022. Now the prototype did not look as intense as expected. The pacing looked a bit off and it just didn't look to have much airtime compared to Vacoma's other new loopers. But the inversions do look wonderful, particularly that high speed barrel roll that should be loaded with laterals and hang time. Number 18, Prairie Screamer at Trader's Village. The relocated Scandia Screamer will reopen at this flea market just down the road from Six Flags Over Texas. This is the largest coaster Myler has ever built, and it's a deceptively strong airtime machine. I have a separate review for Scandia Screamer, but this coaster had some solid laterals on the unbanked turns and plenty of ejector airtime that caught me by surprise. Number 17, Hot Wheels and Mattel Adventure Park. It took way too long to get another chance GTX, and this one will be a lot different than Lightning Run. This one will have a launch, and the layout looks to have more of a focus on twists and inversions. The ride should be very smooth, but the rest of the ride seems like a wild card because we haven't seen something like this from chance. But I think this has the potential to match some of the new age Vacomas we've seen in Europe. 
Number 16, Palindrome Akotaland. This may be the shortest Gerslauer Infinity Coaster, but it has some interesting elements. The twisting initial drop looks like it could offer an awesome combination of ejector airtime and laterals. Then I cannot wait to try those two inversions going both forwards and backwards. The zero-g stall over the roadway looks like it will offer some sustained hang time in both directions paired with amazing visuals, and the inline twist looks like it will be super snappy. Add in some weightlessness on the far spike, and a spot where the ride will apparently pull 4.5 G's, and this could be the sleeper hit of 2022. Number 15, Relocated Cannon at Lost Island Theme Park. This intimate hydraulic launch coaster is being relocated from Liseberg in Sweden. The smallest accelerator coaster may only launch you at 47 miles per hour or 75 kilometers per hour, but it looks to have some punch to it. You then have a fast paced layout with several airtime hills, tight turns, and two hang time filled inversions. This looks to be the premier roller coaster at this new Iowa park. Number 14, Defiance at Glenwood Caverns. This Gerslauer Eurofighter may be short, but that placement atop the mountain will make this coaster special. The visuals look world class. The layout isn't too shabby either. The beyond vertical drop should deliver ejector airtime in droves, some of the valley should have mild force, and the banana roll should be disorienting, and then that inline twist should have great hang time. The wild card will be the top hat. Sometimes these offer great airtime and laterals in Gerslauer's, while other times they're duds. Either way, that unique setting will make this coaster stand out in the pack. Number 13, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot. This prototype Vacoma spinning coaster looks intriguing. I'm not sure how thrilling this coaster will be, but the spinning and theming should result in a pure fun ride experience. And there will be a whole lot of ride too. Guardians will shatter the record for the world's longest indoor coaster, and I'm glad Epcot is finally getting their own roller coaster. Number 12, the unknown launch coaster of SeaWorld Abu Dhabi. This Intamin launch coaster looks like a combination of SeaWorld San Diego's Manta and China's Steel Dolphin. The ride looks to have at least three launches and a super long layout. Without a full POV, it's hard to tell how much airtime, whip, or hang time this coaster will have, but I'm placing faith in Intamin's track record that this will be a super fun ride with a diverse range of forces. Number 11. Icebreaker at SeaWorld Orlando. This Premier Rides launch coaster has the stats of a family coaster, but it actually looks to have some surprisingly strong airtime. The extended launch sequence should offer some good weightlessness, and then the main layout has a lot of sharp airtime hills that should abruptly pop riders out of their seat. Number 10, Turbo Turtle Power at Nickelodeon Universe in China. This intimate creation looks very similar to Gerslauer's TMNT Shell Razor at the New Jersey Nickelodeon Universe. I love Shell Razor's layout. It has a strong launch, an amazing peon vertical drop, and seven inversions with tons of hang time and disorientation. Unfortunately, that ride is plagued by a rattle. If Intamin can transform that layout into a smooth experience, plus add that extra inversion, this ride will be fantastic. Number 9, Tron Light Cycle Run at Magic Kingdom. This Vacoma motorbike coaster looks visually stunning with all those lights. Everyone I know who has ridden the version in Shanghai has nothing but positives to say. And if this coaster has some force in the turns as well, it easily has the potential to be the best roller coaster at all of Walt Disney World. Number 8, Wonder Woman Flight of Courage at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is Six Flags Great Adventures Jersey Devil Coaster with an extra turn. And that isn't a bad thing. Many have deemed Jersey Devil the worst RMC creation, but I think that ride has some underrated power in the back row. The first drop is one of the best in the world, the Zero-G stall and Zero-G roll have incredible hang time, and every other hill offers varying levels of airtime now that the mid-course brake run is appropriately tuned. This will likely be the third best coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain, which is no small feat. Number 7. American Dryer Looping at Indiana Beach. Chimera was arguably the most intense coaster I ever experienced when I rode at La Feria. I will go into more detail in a separate review, but that coaster was incredible. It ran trimless and hauled through the layout. 
The three inversions had insane positive Gs and caused me to gray out without fail. Then the lack of braking caused the dips and twists in the second half to have much stronger airtime and laterals than expected. I'm excited to see the Schwarzkopf Triple Looper make a triumphant return to Indiana Beach, and it will be interesting to see how fast it runs. Number 6, the unknown Vacoma at Fanta Animation Park. This Vacoma Renegade model looks like a combination of their well-received Bermuda Blitz and Hyperspace Warp models. The steep first drop should offer strong airtime, the big stall should have amazing hang time, and then it looks to have plenty of low airtime hills that should offer some strong airtime. And if this ride also has the positive G's of Let Coaster, it will be one of Vacoma's best. Number 5, Phoenix at Farrup Summerland. This Vacoma Wildcat coaster looks fantastic and boasts 14 different airtime moments, according to Vacoma. The initial drop should have some awesome airtime, and that inverted top hat looks like it would be one of the best inversions out there. Then the rest of the layout looks like it has elements of Leck Coaster, including that awesome corkscrew through the station. Now many of the airtime hills do look more drawn out like Abyssus, but they should still offer fun floater airtime at worst, and the overall layout looks well paced. Number 4, Leviathan at SeaWorld. Gravity Group has been knocking it out of the park with their layouts. They are usually smooth and packed with some good airtime. The reason I placed Leviathan so high is the backwards facing car. I'm a sucker for backwards airtime, and this ride should offer almost a dozen instances of it. Number 3, Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. I saw this coaster test back in March, and my hype for the attraction only grew. The first half should have a punchy launch, some incredible hang time on the Zero-G winder, and some mild airtime moments, but it's the second half that looks world class. That multi-pass launch sequence should offer a mix of airtime and weightlessness, then that top hat and giant outward bank look like they could be two of the strongest and most sustained ejector airtime moments on the planet. You then have a stall that should offer some wild hang time like the one on Velocicoaster, plus another airtime hill before the brakes for good measure. This ride looks varied and very intense. Number 2, Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa. This gigantic RMC hybrid conversion looks like a speed demon. The 206 foot or 63 meter tall drop should offer some fantastic ejector airtime. Then from the testing footage, Iron Gwazi looks to absolutely fly through the layout. The ride has more overbanks and twists than RMC's other creations, but I have little doubt this coaster off several great spots of ejector airtime and hang time filled inversions. And coming in at number 1 is Airy Force 1 at Fun Spot Atlanta. I still cannot believe this park is getting an RMC, especially one this ambitious. The ride looks like a mix of Zadra and Untamed, which are two of my favorite RMCs. The first half has an amazing looking drop, a unique dive loop, a stall that should offer amazing hang time, and an outward bank that reminds me of the one on Steel Vengeance. Then the second half has a rapid blitz of ejector airtime hills, the inversions do look wonderful, particularly that high speed barrel roll that should be loaded with laterals and hang time. So those are my top 25 most anticipated roller coasters in 2022. Hopefully none of these get delayed, but we will see what happens. What is your most anticipated coaster for 2022? I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these rides or any I missed down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.